Our next speaker is Sean O'Connor. Sean flew in from Georgia. He is the Executive Director of Information Services at the Grady Health System. His favorite class at UMass was creative writing. After graduation, Sean hopes to spend more time with his wife and two girls catching up on those Disney movies. <laughs> and after that, it's on to graduate school for a master's degree. Sean's advisor is Dr. Abby Dolman, and his concentration is writing and literary studies. Please welcome Sean O'Connor. Thank you, Professor Swopis. Congratulations, fellow graduates. The path to this moment has been speckled with various challenges, waypoints, and accomplishments. I'm sure that for many of you, there were moments of turbulence and exhaustion. Moments when the pressure was building and the waters of doubt began to trickle through your walls of psychological resilience. Moments when kids were crying, work was calling, sleep was at a premium, and personal bandwidth was non-existent. <laughs> Moments when you might have asked yourself, am I really gonna be able to pull this thing off? And yet, here you stand, triumphant. As somebody who may or may not have had a couple of those moments, I'm honored to stand with you. For many of us, the path to this point was longer than we anticipated, but that is why today is so special and so validating. As Thomas Paine once said, the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. Looking around today, I can see that nobody is taking this accomplishment lightly. Like many of you, my path to this stage was a curvy one, but as I stand here today looking back, I can say with a heart full of sincerity that I wouldn't change a thing. And to me, it's that sentiment that is the best part of the University Without Walls at UMass Amherst. It cherishes the paths that have led to its doors. It requires that we leave UMass Amherst armed not only with the newfound academic knowledge from our hours upon hours of coursework, but also a better understanding of the value of experience and its effect on us. Inherent in this process is an appreciation for the diversity of all paths and a better understanding that all experiences, pleasant and not so pleasant, are universally educational. When we reflect on our paths, we see memories, experiences, and lessons that have woven the fabric of our identities. Our paths have a profound effect on the way that we view the world, and they provide us with a knowledge set and insight that could only have been acquired by walking them. Our paths teach us that for many things, only by doing do we truly understand. I'm proud to incorporate my experiences and lessons gained at UMass Amherst into my path, and today, represents that incorporation. I've worked in the field of healthcare information technology for well over 10 years, and I love what I do. So when I enrolled at UMass Amherst, I did so with the full intent of selecting the health studies concentration. It made sense professionally. It was clearly the right thing to do. Well, it was the logical thing to do. However, in what could be considered a bit of a trend in my life, I zigged when most would have zagged, uh, you see, after I enrolled, it didn't take long until something inside of me bubbled up to the surface. It was something that I'd felt before when I was younger, but buried in the depths of my soul because it didn't line up with life's expectations. Yes, there it was again, the desire to write. At first, I dismissed it. After all, what good is a creative writing concentration to a 40-year-old IT executive? Yet, the desire stood without relent, a lurking phantom behind me, constantly tapping me on my shoulder, reminding me that it wasn't going away. It didn't care that I was almost 40. It didn't care that I'd spent 15 years working in IT. It didn't care that it wasn't going to directly help me in my career. It only knew that I loved to write. So finally, I surrendered. I went ahead and I changed my concentration to writing and literary studies. And I reunited with a creative process that I abandoned years ago and immediately felt the excitement that came with it. From creation to peer review to rewrite upon rewrite, I felt a sense of satisfaction that I hadn't had the courage to feel before, and I loved it. So therein lies an important lesson that I will carry from UMass Amherst and bestow upon my two young children. Accept your passion. Nourish it and appreciate it, because passion is rare, and passion is what makes us tick. Passion is the fuel that drives innovation. It forces us to stretch outside of our comfort zone and beyond what we initially thought possible, because passion won't be ignored. Passion is what got you here today. Put simply, what I learned is that the denial of passion is tragic. Thank, 
I thank all of you, my professors, my fellow students, the University Without Walls program, for helping me learn that lesson. To my two beautiful daughters, Maggie and Charlotte, I pledge to you that I will try to help you identify your passions so that I can support them fully, whatever they may be. I never want you to look back on your paths and wonder if you've ever denied your passion. To the faculty here at UMass Amherst, thank you. I found every instructor to be empowering and every interaction to be valuable and meaningful. In particular, I'd like to give a special thanks to my advisor, Abby Dahlman, who has been such an amazing partner with me throughout my journey. <laughs> Abby is, is both an educator and advisor. You rock. I would go so far as to say that you're the best at UMass, but given the current company, I might risk offending somebody, so <laughs> we'll just take that offline. To my mother, thanks for showing me what a truly good and selfless human being looks like. You're somebody that I strive to be and somebody that I point my children to as a role model. Most importantly, thank you to my wife and the love of my life, Kristen. Thanks for allowing me to stay tucked away in the basement, working towards this goal on the weekends while you single-handedly kept order in the organized chaos that is the O'Connor household. <laughs> I know it wasn't always easy, and next weekend, I promise to start on the neglected list of tasks that has continuously grown over the last few years. There's only one small concession that I will need moving forward. I will always need to make some time for my writing. Thank you all, and congratulations on your tremendous achievement. May it help drive you towards contentment, and may we all share in the newfound and indestructible pride that we now carry with us when we say that we are graduates of the University of Massachusetts Amherst. <laughs>